Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Grain Feed brought to you by EverAg. This is your weekly news feed for all things grain and all things feed. Each week, we bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping grain and dairy farmers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, working from Chicago. Joining me from Texas is our Director of Feed Procurement and IT Guru, Jake Kingsley. And way down in Atlanta, Illinois, we have our Director of Buyer Relations, Verl Prather. Gentlemen, how are we today? Doing good. Doing great. Another sunny day in Texas. Yeah, that's good. Good for you, Jake. Um, that's good to hear. Uh, Paige, let's timestamp the broadcast. It's Wednesday morning. We're filming shortly after the March WASDE reports release, which was at 11 a.m. this morning. Each month, the USDA releases a World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates report, WASDE. The market was not looking for a game changer with this report. The Ukrainian war had already provided enough action on top of South American yield concerns leading up to it. But let's dive in and see what the government had to say, starting with corn. For one, on the U.S. balance sheet, end stocks for old crop corn was down 100 million bushels, which was more than the markets anticipated. Um, we're not seeing that in the futures market at the moment because corn continues to be dragged down further uh, by the wheat sell-off. We'll get to that in a little bit. But ethanol use was up another 25 million bushels, which is notable and an item we've been discussing here on the broadcast, as well as exports were up a notable 75 million bushels. So end stocks were down more than expected. Um, Verl, we've been talking about this ethanol production and potential needs to increase that demand figure. We got it. As long as um, you know the, the world situation continues to maybe worsen, we're going to potentially see exports increase as well. We saw a bump today. The government did note in their report was a disclaimer at the top saying they've taken only some of the Ukrainian situation into consideration. Um, it's an initial assessment were their words. So just so everyone knows when they read the report or see the futures markets react, the government's report today does not quite take in just how severe the Ukrainian conflict is at the moment. So Verl, any thoughts on your side in terms of the ethanol and export increases today? Yeah, so uh, starting on the ethanol side, of course, we've seen um, a strong production of ethanol uh, for the last few months, and, and we kind of had an idea that, hey, this uh, bump in uh, demand may be coming. Um, and so a small bump, but nonetheless, it, it, uh, it got printed by the USDA today. On the export side of things, um, obviously, you know, the, the trade as a whole is already pricing in a lower ending stock number than what was printed today. So we we outdid what the average guess was for this particular report, but prices indicate that we're already trading trading a ending stock number much lower than the 1.4 uh, uh, 4 billion bushels anyway. Um, nonetheless, uh, on the export side of things, we're starting to see immediate demand uh, for global buyers. A lot of that export business is not quite making it its way up towards our area of the Midwest. Um, it's kind of getting fulfilled uh, south of us. Uh, but nonetheless, it is going to affect our ending stock uh, balance and, and potentially have some more effects down the road. I mean, I would look for the USDA to continue raising export demand overall. And Jake, as we do continue to potentially raise that export demand and bump the ethanol demand in terms of DDG production and availability, any updates on your side? Yeah, we've seen uh, we've seen basis, particularly in corn, popped up a little bit over the last couple of weeks already. And now <laughs> virtually any kind of contract going forward is in a little bit of a pause here today. Uh, with that ban on Russian oil, we've seen the rail railroad just go crazy. And so nobody knows what that's going to cost them and how much they're going to be able to move over certain periods of time with all this new oil demand going to rail. So uh, we've seen basis pop up or offers altogether be pulled temporarily. 
So yeah, the uh, the crude oil and gas import ban is going to be extremely interesting. We're seeing the European economies attempt to react to that as well because much of them are far more dependent on Russian energy than we are here in the U.S. Um, speaking of world, let's look at their end stocks quickly. Uh, down slightly as anticipated, uh, the Argentina corn. Production numbers were only down a million tons, so slightly less than the markets were looking for. And Brazil was unchanged. We were expecting a slight uh, uh, production decrease there as well. Um, and again, note the Ukrainian corn production numbers were unchanged. We here at EverAg are anticipating cuts uh, to those numbers as the government has a chance to. Uh, adjust these figures as the weeks go by, and assuming we will be seeing that in the April WASD report. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's move on to beans, gentlemen. The ending stocks numbers in the United States were down slightly, 40 million bushels, slightly less than maybe the markets expected, which could add towards some of the pressure we're seeing at the board today in futures. Crush was unchanged. And exports were up 40 million bushels, and the government noted that that was because of the South American uh, production cuts. So, Jake and Verl, in terms of the crush being unchanged, uh, we have been anticipating maybe some slight increases there, not seeing it today, but we are seeing that export demand. Uh, Verl, any comments from your side in the Midwest based on these figures? Yeah, just uh, kind of quickly here, we continue to see basis values mostly unchanged for soybeans. It's kind of been a uh, commodity that is a little bit um, less in touch with what's going on in Ukraine. And, and you know, corn and wheat have gotten more of the storyline, I suppose. So they're getting the headlines and, and uh, soybeans are just kind of dragging along as well. We continue to see strong crush, strong crush margins. Um, exports have picked up, especially on new crop. Yeah. And I think that's, um, that is very notable, right? For all that, the fact that the nearby futures and prices have been so firm that, you know, those new crop prices have become a bit more attractive, I think for the export market, we might continue to see a little bit more of that. Uh, Jake, before we hit the uh, crush and meal story a bit further in the U.S. Let's just note the world bean numbers. End stocks were down 3 million metric tons, which was about as expected. The Argentinian production numbers were down 1.5 million tons. I think um, we might have a little bit more room there, but the market anticipated that cut. Brazilian bean production was down 7 million metric tons, which is a bit more than the market anticipated, I think a bit more than we were anticipating as well. It's a big cut. Um, again, we're not seeing a ton of support at the board at the moment, but I think once the market digests this figure, they'll be anticipating maybe a little more support from that figure, um, but we'll see. So Jake, back to you on the meal side of things. In the US, ending stocks for meal were actually unchanged because we know production was unchanged from that unchanged crush production figure. Um, but use exports also unchanged. So the U.S. balance sheet is the same. But again, I think we've been stressing each week there's still availability issues here. Um, not focus too much on these figures. I think you believe we might have room for some reductions, right, on that end stock number? Well, you, m maybe a small reduction. Yeah, I, yeah. Think the bigger, I think the bigger point is that we can't really reduce those ending stocks because we're already exporting at, at capacity. We're crushing and exporting at capacity. So we're doing all we can. I think maybe one of the things we can look at is there's a little bit of a positive in, in new crop that we're expecting Canadian canola production to rebound and, and prices are as good as they are. We, we should have incentive to plant all the acres in the world. So uh, old, pro old crop's probably going to kind of just ride this thing out until we get a new crop off here um, and then the opportunity is going to be in the new crop era. Yeah, I think that's very fair. And, you know, just looking at the board numbers at the moment, you know, despite beans trending lower at the moment, we have meals still trading firmer, especially old crop, you know, May as of uh, almost noon today, Chicago time is up about $4. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out here over the coming weeks. Just to point out the world meal figures, South American crush production was mostly unchanged despite the bean production cuts in both Argentina uh, and Brazil. And China's uh, crush production was slightly lower along with its 
uh, meal usage. So just something to keep in mind. We talked about one of our market moments you know, a couple of weeks ago is China is going to focus on its own sustainability and supply chain issues within its borders and see how self-dependent it can be potentially on those uh, on those feedstocks. Um, so something to keep an eye on it. Just to touch on wheat, because that's been the crazy commodity over the last week or two that um, everybody's best friend and relative is calling you to talk about. Um, Wheat is limit down right now. Again, the Ukrainian and Russian wheat numbers were essentially not touched by the U.S. government in today's report. And of course, we are anticipating uh, some big swings in those numbers as we move on in the coming months for those reports. So in the meantime, we'll keep an eye on those things. Jake, Verl, Thank you both very much for joining and for your analysis today. Well done, as always. Thank you to Daniel and the Blimling crew for their charts. Thank you to Paige for her behind-the-scenes magic. Thank you to the viewers for watching the Grain Feed. Contact information is on the screen. Please reach out. We would love to hear from you. If you're heading to the Commodity Classic in New Orleans today or tomorrow, please let us know and visit the Ever Ag booth. Britt O'Connell is on her way to New Orleans right now, and she and the rest of the team down there would love to see you. And finally, I would like to wish a happy birthday to my mom. I love you, and thank you for watching every week. That is all for today. See you next week on The Grain Feed. 